Howdy guys, I'm Jeep and Jason, and this time on the Auto Edits Jeep Buildup, we're gonna go top shelf with some Baja Designs LP6s on the front, and we're gonna go with a full rock light kit from Baja Designs as well. And buckle up, because I'm gonna pack a lot of details into this video, because I went online to look for a, video, a detailed video on this install, and I couldn't really find a good one, so I'm gonna make one. So I'm gonna pack a lot of details, a lot of info, a couple pro tips for you on how to wire this stuff in. So let's get busy. So first up, the obvious thing is the mounting them wherever on your vehicle. I'm not gonna cover that. It's three bolts in this one. Now that's a bit overkill because these are race car parts. This is not your normal light install in the sense that these are top dollar high end products. If you're wanting bargain basement stuff, this is the wrong brand to be looking for. If you want the best on the market, that's what that's where this positions itself. So everything's overkill. So there's a main bolt in the middle and then there's two quarter 20 bolts on either side. I went ahead and did them all, they don't need it. Uh, they just help keep it stabilized, you know, or when you wanna aim it, so in case you wanna like pound it. Like again, these are designed for trophy trucks, so pounding through bushes and things like that. Uh, trees, that's what these are designed to withstand. Um, let's pull the plastic off. I've been saving this from the install. We'll get the plastic off of both of those. Yeah. Oh, that's the first time I've actually seen it without that on, so this is pretty cool. Now you'll notice this has uh, a pretty beefy aluminum housing with all these really cool vents. They say this is for maximum cooling, but it's actually just for maximum cool factor, and it just looks great. Now while we're here talking about the construction of the LP6s, uh, you'll, you'll see here that it has these cutouts. So it offers 200 degrees of light coverage. So there's quite a bit of side coverage of light out of these things as well as this massive amount on the front. And then these are the LP6 Pro driving combo. So what I like about having a driving combo light is that it has these floods at the bottom here that will do a low fill in the front and then you have these freaking laser beams up here that will just project and punch out way out in front of the vehicle. So that's the that's the benefit of having a driving combo light. So now that the easiest part of the install is done and that's just simply bolting it to wherever you're gonna mount it uh, on the Jeeps here, a lot of these bumpers have a place like this. Boom, done. Uh, let's get going from here back and that's the wiring. So these, I ordered the pigtail, the wiring harness separately. Now remember these are des mostly designed for people with uh, a performance application. So there's gonna have a switch panel which I do and I'm gonna show you that and how I recommend that that's a good good option to have but they sell everything you could stand alone install these if you'd like now these are a four wire Deutsch connector which is black for ground yellow for the backlight fill red for the low beam white for the high beam or full application full LED application and so those just simply plug into the back of these and that's it for that so now I have both of those connectors running underneath the radiator and into the engine bay. And then that's where things get tricky and I'll show you how I recommend you do it and how I did it in this application, which worked out pretty great. So let's get inside the engine bay and I'll show off the wiring. All right, so some of the accessories that you should definitely pay attention to and order when you get your LP6s to integrate them into your system are uh, the backlit add-on kit or harness, and that's this right here, and then the controller module harness, and that's basically those two harnesses, the four wire harnesses with the Deutsch connectors that basically come to right here, and that's these two guys right here. I'll show you how those wire in in a moment, but let me explain to you why this is a handy little guy right here. Now this is the backlit add-on kit. Now. What this does is it lets you have a few different variety of, a variety of ways of connecting into your onboard system for that backlight. Now you can have it come on as a key on and that's where this little guy right here has these cool little options where you have these fuse tabs where you could literally just open the fuse box, uh, tap into a fuse of a system that you want that has a key on or lights on or whatever system you want. It's a really handy way of doing that. There's also this guy 
which is a kind of one of those wire things where you just put the wire, you can just capture, find a wire, put this on. And this is what I would have used if I didn't go the way I'm about to show you uh, a cool pro tip on my setup. So these are the handy accessories to help integrate those things into your system. Now here's what I'm choosing to do. So I want the backlight to only go on when I have the running lights on or the headlights on on this particular application. So what you have to do is find a system that is on when the running lights are on. And in this Jeep, in a lot of our JKs, you have an outboard fender light on your stock JK. This, I have these metal cloak fenders that doesn't have an access, doesn't have a port for that thing. So I just unplugged that light. So that's what this is right here. This is, this used to live right in here and plug in to the harness. So I just removed these things. So this plug has been just running empty on my Jeep for however many years I've been run, rocking these fenders. So I thought, well, a quick and easy way to run the backlight off of the headlight on or a running light option was to just tap into this little guy. So I literally just took the other one of these, cut it, and that's what you see here. So this is the plug and then this would have a light on the other end of it, just cut it, just terminated the ground end or the, uh, the ground loop end of this and just tapped right into both of the yellow lights into the LP6 harness, right into this. This plugs into the stock connector and that will manage my backlight for the LP6s. So I only want them on when I'm running lights or headlights. Uh, I don't need them on as daytime running lights. This Jeep didn't have that. I don't think I really missed that yet. I could always just click that on. So that's how I'm doing it. And this is just a good example of how to be creative about uh, adapting this to your Jeep or your rig or whatever you're gonna do. So I like that. That's a good option for me. Of course, I'm gonna clean all this stuff up, but let me show you to continue on this path, um, how I'm running high and low beam. These are the two harnesses that come off of the back of each LP6 lights. And they come underneath the radiator. This one just comes under the grill, right into here. I'll dress these all in a minute, but I really wanted you guys to see really how this, how easy and how to do, how, a recommended way to do this. So I have both red, this is the low beam light. Now you don't want to run these things, run power to both. You wanna have a discrete power supply for the high beams, the white, the white wires, and then the low beams, the red wires. And you want a specific switch. I'll take you inside and show you. You want an on, off, on switch, toggle switch. So you never feed power to both of these at the same time. Important thing to just keep in mind. Now in this Jeep, you may remember I installed a painless trail rocker system, and I've been really thrilled with it. There's a lot of those on the market, so just pick whichever one strikes your fancy. I'm kind of into the old school. I like a, a block of switches. Uh, my buddy, uh, TRL Jeep on Instagram, Chris, he has one of those really bitchin' switch pros with a digital readout. It's pretty cool. So get whatever one you like. That's an important tool to get here. Once you get it mounted, a system like the, the trail rocker, um, once it's done, it's infinitely easier to continue this. So I have wire one, which used to run the lights on the bumper before, running the low beams, and now I have a separate wire running the high beams, and I just did a quick finagle of things inside the switch block, and I'll show you in a minute uh, how to do that. So here's an example of a few different switches. So this is the stock switch in my setup. So it would have been off, on. That's how that works. So you have off, on, off, on. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This right here is what's called a momentary switch, and you can see it, it, it goes back to the off, on, off. But that's the basics for the power. And then because I'm kind of a stickler for running ground, really solid ground wires in systems, a lot of people overlook that and underground their 12 volt systems because you don't realize that in a system like this, the ground wire carries the same amount as the power wires. So I have a discrete ground wire going to here. So I now have a ground wire for the trail, the rock lights, now where's the power, where's the, there it is. So I already have a harness wired up from the painless, and then I'll have wire three on the switch panel running rock lights here. And we're, we still have a lot of work to do on that, so stay tuned for that. But that's the basics of how I'm setting this system up here. It seems simple once you break it out like this, you're running these two together, and that's just a barrel connector, and two of those into one end, power supply into this end, 
Same here. You can obviously see here, I'm being honest, I accidentally forgot to put my heat shield on, my, my heat shrink on there. So I just wrapped it with some self vulcanizing tape. Let me know in the comments if you guys do that ever. It's like one of those things where you're like having that day. And I'm like, am I gonna unsolder that? No, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna rock this. I'm gonna put all of this in some painless um, braid covers anyway, but I just wanted you guys to see how easy but tricky this can be. Let's get in the cab and I'll show you how the on off on works in this situation. So here's a good shot of the trail rocker. Now I got the six switch model. Now here's a cool thing to recommend that when you get a product, really do the deep dive. I don't know about you guys, but I like to deep dive into as much knowledge as I, I can about the product. So I learned that they sell this in two flavors. They sell this in a six switch and an eight switch flavor. Now the cool trick here is that the eight switch and the six switch relay box doesn't change. So the relay box inside the engine bay has eight relays and eight circuits in it, just six switches. The beauty in that is that I took relay number eight and put it in the on off on switch here. So now here on switch place one, I have that wire that I showed you in the engine bay Switch one, low beam goes for to right here, then the on, off, on. So that's on, off, on. High beam is switch eight and relay eight running the lights. Now that's another good, really good moment to just pay, pay attention here. All high draw lights need to run through a relay. Never just run a wire from your battery to a high draw light like these things here. Um, the light, it just takes, it draws too much power. It will heat that light up and it will fry. So you want to relay in between there. Um, and that's the beauty of having a switch panel or some sort of a product like this in place that gives you that power and that, that ease. Now, if you guys haven't seen the video where I installed the trail rocker here, give it a watch. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty uh, descriptive video of why I like this. This is just another example of how powerful a unit like this is in your vehicle. You may notice I have my lockers over here on switches five and six. Now that's because I was able to intercept the stock e-locker relays right there by the battery. Go watch that video. I show you how to do this and integrate them right into here. So now the stock switch down here works, but it's really nice to be able to, I don't even have to look and hit those things. Now, a lot of people said, oh, aren't you worried about hitting those when you're on the highway? No, you wanna know why? Because I just tell myself, hey, dumb stick, don't reach up and put your lockers on on the highway. How often are you doing these things when you're going 70 miles an hour? That's the common thing I hear. Guys, when are you doing that? If you are, stop, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> It's pretty easy. I've, I've loved it up here. It's been a good good. It's been a good modification and that's the basics of the LP6 install. Let's get started on the rock lights. All right, so for the hardest thing you're going to do physically for this entire install, that's actually put these little crimp these little connectors on to the LED rock lights. Now, these are a really, again, if you're looking for bargain basement stuff, this is not the product line for you. This is all top of the line, extra durable, waterproof, aluminum housing. So they're like super durable. That's what you're getting here. You're not getting disco lights uh, for $99 on Amazon. You're getting the probably the most durable, one of the most durable rock lights you're gonna get. I chose the amber to kind of match that. I don't know, uh, maybe I'll go blue. They have blue, a couple different colors that you could choose from, but they're just solid colors. So uh, you'll need a, set, a special set of these crimpers here that I got with my painless wiring harness when I was doing uh, the Mustang. To do these things, uh, pretty readily available at whatever your auto parts store. Um, but crimping all four of these, is a chore. <laughs> My big fat fingers did not have a good time with that. And I failed on one. I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. <laughs> I, I always try to just admit when I screw stuff up and you know, it's part of the it's part of the fun. Anyway, so I screwed this one up right here. So I ended up just putting on a uh, regular water resistant connector and that's running up inside the thing. So now this is a place where I don't know where to mount these things. There's no real clear, What's the best place? Uh, I watched Trail Recon, Brad did some years ago and he put them both down here. Uh, I looked and I kind of thought it would be neat to light up this entire area here. So I'm gonna try it right here. And then in the back, uh, we'll go lower and see if we can get some undercarriage coverage back there. So right here, it's simple, straightforward. 
So you can see in these aluminum housings, you have these little uh, bolt holes here, drill straight through, nuts on the back, wires on the inside. Now, here is what this kit comes with. It comes with a pre-cut, ready to go harness that will save you a ton of effort. So now this, if you remember, I have the pre-wired power end in the engine bay coming from switch two, switch three inside on the painless. So that will go in there and then in a minute we'll figure out where to run these things. But the cool thing about this harness is that look at the length on this. It already is ready to go for your vehicle. So you now have enough to get you to all four corners. Oh, here's the end that I had to install because I ruined one of those. Boy, I did a number on it. Here it is right here. Or here's what's left of it. So what are you going to do? So let's lay this thing out on the ground and then you'll see what I'm talking about. And this is the basic installation here. I'll bring you in the back while we actually mount these two uh, when we find a spot for these things in the back and start getting the wiring run. And then we'll see, see what this all looks like lit up. All right, so you can see once you lay this out, you can see where everything goes. It's very, very easily laid out. So you have closest to wherever the power source is gonna be. So you could start it on either side of the engine bay. So if you're starting this on the battery side, that's fine. But for me, we're starting right in the front there where, where I have that cluster of painless uh, trail rocker wires, power wires. So we'll start there, one there. This goes across to that one. This goes long wise, that's, this will come back. And then I think I found a spot right back here to install the rear rock lights down low to give us good coverage underneath here. And then obviously, boom. All right, I found a spot under here that I think I like in the rear. It's gonna go right here. So you can see it's at the leading edge of the wheel well here. And so I just drilled two holes that match the housing on the light and those will go right there like that. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take some silicone and just kind of goop along those areas where the holes are because I like to be super cautious uh, about water seeping in and, and into the tub right there. I don't know, it's probably overkill, but that's what we're gonna do. So let's get these installed and then wire. And then we'll get this wire started. We just know it's gonna go inboard from here for sure. So we'll just get that tucked in and we'll deal with that in a minute. All right, so I have a new least favorite part of this process. Um, remember earlier when I said it was putting those little connectors on the end of the uh, LED cables? Well, now it's being under here routing this, these cables to safe places to get to these lights because I just, I don't know if you guys can see on my giant bald dome, I, had, I just got bit by a black widow or some sort of giant black spider that fell out of the back rear wheel well and now I have a giant painful welt on my head. Ow, this sucks. Anywho, so uh, another quick thing that I did actually find uh, uh, worth, worthy of note and not me whining about <laughs> getting bit by a spider, but I do want to explain this the giant thing. Uh, so on the front, I realized that I couldn't run the wire down the frame rail on the other side of the Jeep because the exhaust pipe is there. And in my head, I was like, oh, it's going to be a piece of cake and go straight back and da, da, da. oh. No, so I went across, I'll show you where I went across on the front cross member, front two, super easy because they're right there in the engine bay. So I went across to those, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but for now, so then I go over the frame rail, no exhaust pipe on this side, just a catalytic converter, I was able to tuck it in. And now I'm gonna go above, so that it comes down here and I have it kind of zipped together, uh, taped together here so I can uh, get it across. And now I'm gonna do, use the old coat hanger trick and kind of follow this little pigtail here and coat, hang, coat hanger, stab this thing up where I want it to go above the frame rail here. And then I think what I'll do is there's, these are body mounts right here. So there's three of them right here to the frame. And so I'm gonna go above those two body mounts, pull this thing all the way back and these are just for the two rears and then I'll zip tie this to this there's a little loom that goes to the rear I think that goes to the tail lights and no it must go to uh, the trailer hitch and whatnot so uh, so I'll loom that to that just to keep it secure and then 
continue on back here, but uh, that's kind of the hardest part of this whole thing. And then obviously being attacked by a giant pterodactyl spider um, was kind of sucky, but uh, yeah. So I'm gonna keep going and we're, we're getting close. So last two right here. All right, so technically the last thing to do is connect the power wire to the loom. We'll tuck that in here for safekeeping. Everything looks good. No smoke or electrical shorts happening. Let's do some testing. Let's see what this thing looks like. All right, let me shut this door. And first up, let's hit the rock lights. We have rock lights. Yeah. All right. That looks pretty good. All right, sneaking up on this. Let's go to running lights and the amber backlighting for those. So if you notice, I have the JW Speaker J3s here. Uh, if I had the J2s, your running lights would be, no, actually, those wouldn't be on. It would be those lights here. So you can see here, we have the, the LP6 running lights here. We still have our rock lights. Uh, it'll be curious to see uh, get out in the dark. And I, I, I kind of think now maybe I should have put these lower uh, in the front. The backs look perfect. They light up right in front of the rear tires perfectly. I think it's time to put the juice to those things. Let's see what we got here. All right. Low beam. What do we got? So there you go. You can see it is the, look at this. Look at how much light goes out the side of these things. That is something that's very cool about this. Now let's turn on the high beams. That is some cool stuff. All right, I think we'll do a nighttime test with these things. We'll just have to wait a few minutes, but success. Uh, nothing's sizzling, nothing's cooking. Everything seems pretty happy. Woohoo! Let's see our Trail 6 Pros, come on. Th those are at full blast right now. Interesting to see the color differences there. Now these I have Bluetooth into my phone so I can change these from amber to white. But it kind of looks good just like that right now. <laughs> All right, I say we pull this thing out in the dark in the street and we test these things out. First, let's turn on low beam and the rock lights. Let's do high beams just for fun. So fascinating. All right, let's get this out on the level street and we'll get an idea. All right, so I'm not super pleased on my placement on the front lights. We'll have to actually see what it's like on the trail. From here, it looks okay. Uh, it doesn't really show, actually it does okay. So we'll see, we'll get it out on the trail. This right here, I love too. This is just normal run mode. So I have the, the headlights, the JW fog lights down there. And then those things are really handsome in backlight mode. So I'm stoked to have uh, that feature up and running in that trim. So this is pretty cool. Am I happy? Yeah, this is happy. These are way overkill, um, but they're cool. So if you're going for that level, this is that level. <laughs> I mean, look. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Uh, another pretty awesome upgrade done to the Jeep. We'll take it, now it's time to take it out on the trail. I think this might be one of our next adventure vehicles. What do you guys think? Let me know. I have the PRP seat video coming soon. I have a unique take on that one. 30 day t torture test in the mix right now. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, enjoy your drive. I'm gonna go drive this thing.